Hi everyone. Today I am going to share with you uh, how to use Excel in order to solve your problem for the binomial probability distribution. This topic is covered under chapter 2 with the topic of probability distribution and for this video today I am going to focus on the binomial probability distribution and we know that we are going to cover another one that will be poison probability distribution and I will do the same video for poison uh, probability distribution later on. And for today's video, I am going to be specific on the binomial probability distribution. So we, before we go to the discussion with the Excel function, uh, I would like to remind you on the few terms that you, sh you should remember, uh, especially on the words of random variable discrete random variable, probability distribution, discrete probability distribution, probability mass function, as well as cumulative distribution function. So this will be some of the terms that you will see later on and you should remember what will be the differentiation between each and every single terms that we have here. And other than that, I would like you to remember also some of the uh, concept and theory of the binomial probability distribution, especially how uh, certain uh, variable uh, is following a binomial probability distribution and what are the parameters involved in the distribution, as well as how to find the exact probability uh, for a certain value of success in the binomial. And of course, we are going to see few functions that we can use in the Excel later on. Now, there will be two examples that I will be covering in this uh, video. The first example is very simple and the second example will be related to large number of trial in the experiment. Now, before we go further, uh, the Excel worksheet that I use is actually available in the e-learning platform that has been downloaded by the course coordinator and for this uh, worksheet, which is covering the Excel worksheet chapter 2, 26 uh, October 2023. And I would like to say a special credit to Miss Aisha Muhammad No for her willingness to prepare the Excel sheet for this video. Now, the last part before we go into Excel, this will be the tables that we are going to use in order to solve our binomial uh, probability distribution. Uh, problem. And as you can see here, the first column reflect the number of success. And we know that in discussing, dis in discussing about binomial probability distribution, we are talking about the variable x that refers to the number of success. And that number of success will relate to the number of trial that we have. And for that particular case, we are going to come up with two uh, column which we call as probability mass function and cumulative distribution function and what is PMF and what is CDF. So for your information, a probability mass function or we call it in short PMF is a function over the sample space of a discrete random variable x which give the probability that x is equal to a certain value or we can write down as px is equal to small x. And this reflect to the success that we have along the number of trial that involved in the experiment. While for CDF, okay, CDF gives the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to the number of successes that we have or success that we have and it is usually denoted as px less than or equal to x so you can see clearly the difference between pmf pmf reflects to the exact success value while for cdf reflect the cumulative successes from certain x that given in your uh, situation now, let us move to our Excel sheet. As I mentioned earlier, you can find this Excel sheet in the e-learning platform under University Malaysia Prolis 
e-learning and please find the uh, second chapter for this particular Excel sheet. And if you can see from the uh, Excel document that we have, there are quite few number of uh, worksheet included in the uh, document. As for this video, I am going to use a specific worksheet called discrete PD. Okay, discrete probability distribution. Now, I have shown you this particular information and I would like to go directly and discuss the example that we are going to um, solve. Okay, so if you look at this particular worksheet, okay, we have arranged or Miss Aisha has arranged uh, the documentation in such way that you uh, need to understand the flow of how you can use all the information from your questions and uh, how you can plug in each of the information into the basic information template or cells and later on you have the template for the table where you have to fill out all the information for the related um, uh, probability uh, function that you need to find. Now let us move to the first questions. Okay, the first question sound like a batch of 10 circuits has a 95% pass rate for a quality test. What is the probability that exactly 9 circuits pass the test? So this is the given question. And from these questions, we know that we are discussing about the binomial probability distribution. Binomial is about two outcome which is success and failure. So uh, in order to understand further, before you go uh, into your calculation, you have to define your x in this case. So how do you define your x? We know that x refers to the number of success. So in your equations, the success refers to the circuit that has passed the quality test. So in short, you can say, or you can define X as, X is the number of circuit that pass or uh, pass the quality test. So you can define your X as that way. Okay. So what else that you should understand? Okay, from the given question, what are the parameters in the binomial probability distribution that reflect your uh, N and P? So because before you can go further, maybe it will be helpful if you can write down the distribution of your uh, given question. In this case, we know that it involves two uh, types of uh, outcome, which is pass or fail. So the pass... Passing the quality test is considered as the success of this experiment while not passing the quality test as the uh, failure of this particular experiment. So for the parameter that you should uh, write down, so it will be X following binomial distribution with the parameter number of trial N and probability of success B. So from this particular example, you know that the number of trial is from the number of batch, 10 circuit, 10, a batch of 10 circuits. So your number of trial is 10. Okay, and the probability of success is 95% pass. So it refers to 0.95 as the success probability. Now, this will be the two uh, important points that you have to know before you uh, calculate or solve your problem. From this particular uh, information, plug in into your cell where the parameter should be noted down. For example, you have to note down your number of trial and in this case we know that we have 10 number of trial and probability of success is 
0 0.95. So you write down 0 0.95. And of course, knowing that the uh, probability of success is 0 0.95, so the probability of failure will be 1 minus the probability of success. So uh, you can write down equal to 1, that will be the total probability minus the probability of success. Go to the cell of P, okay, you can see the blinking circle and then uh, the location of cell is correct. So you can just uh, and click the enter. So it will give you the probability of failure. Now, before we can answer the questions, we would like to, to see how to generate your probability mass function PMF and how to can how you can uh, come come up with your uh, cumulative distribution function, and we are going to use these two PMF and CDF uh, to get the answer of the equations. Let us see how we can generate these two PMF and CDF. Knowing that we have ten number of trial, so we are talking about Okay, different number of successes. For example, we may begin with zero success. Out of 10 successes, we are, out of 10 trial, we may have one success, two success, up until 10 successes. So we list down all the number of trial and we consider this as the number of successes. Okay, now after that, you have to plot your or you have to specify the PMF of these particular successes that we are looking for. Now, uh, for your information, for this particular video, I created two columns so that you can easily understand how I generate the PMF using each and every success that we have in our trial. So the first column refers uh, the probability of exact, exact um, number of success for each and every number of trial that we have. And from this particular uh, probability, we need to find what will be the probability for each number of success. So uh, let us move how to find out the probability of success for each of the trial or for each of the success. Okay, I give some, uh, I give a comment here whereby you can see uh, it will be the function that you are going to use in order to find the PMF for each and every X that you have. Let us move to the first uh, number of success, which is zero success. And the function that you should use will be equal to binom. So it's either you can use the capital letter or you can just use your small letter. It won't be uh, any problem, okay? Binom dot this. This is the first, uh, the first um, uh, instruction is the one that we need to use. And double click this. And you can see that there will be some of the information that you need to fill in in order to uh, Excel uh, to generate the answer. The first number is the number uh, is the number of success. The second is the number of trial. The third is the num the probability value, and the last one is the uh, instruction for you to get the exact probability value. Okay. So in this case, your x will be zero. The first number of success is zero, and then just click the value zero and then enter your uh, comma and then specify the number of trial, which is in cell Q15. So click Q15 and then put your comma and then you have to specify the probability of success, which is in Q18, click that cell. And then the last one is the one that you need to specify it's either true or false in order for you to come up with your pmf okay so you can see uh, true if you want to generate cumulative distribution 
and false for you to generate the probability mass function. So in my case, uh, we would like to come up with the PMF. So double click the false. Okay, and you can uh, close the bracket and then click enter. So that will be your first uh, probability where exactly zero circuit uh, pass the quality test. Now you want to generate the rest of the uh, probability of successes. So you can only drag down the, okay. But what happened in here uh, is that when you did not specify the location of your N and P exact value, so this is what happened. For example, if I go to row number two, whereby I want to calculate uh, exact number of success is equal to one. If I click the instruction here, it shows that the uh, value of N, the cell of N and the cell of P has moved. So what happened? Okay, you have to lock the location of this N and P, but not uh, the number of success in your table. So what did, uh, need to be done is that you have to lock the N and P. So how? So let me erase all the calculation here and we put the dollar sign. This is where the location of your uh, N and this is the location of your P. So you want this cell to be uh, specific and it will uh, be used uh, in order to calculate until n uh, 10 number of successes. So you have to lock using the dollar sign and you have to put before and after the column uh, name. So that will be Q15 uh, for the um, n number of trial and Q18 for the location of your probability of success and then click enter. Now, in this case, you have locked the location of N and P. Now, go to the edge of your circle, uh, of your box here, and then you can track down and all the information or the probability of each of the exact probability value of success uh, already generated for you. Now, we know that the total probability for one, okay, uh, it will be equal to one. So in this case, you have to check, did you uh, correctly uh, find the probability of each of the success? So you have to check and in order to check, so you have to add all the value here and it should give you one. So how you can do that? Go to this cell and then click equal to and then you need to sum all of the value. So sum, type SUM, then put open bracket. And you can see that number one, number two refers to the values that you need to add up. So I will go to my first row, okay? And then drag down until the last, that will be the 10 trial. And then you can close the bracket or you just can click enter. So definitely you get one and it seems that this calculation is correct. So this is how you can find your probability mass function where you can find exact uh, probability value for zero success, one success, two success until 10 successes. Now we move to the second one that will be the cumulative distribution function. What is the difference between PMF and CDF? Remember, PMF, exact probability value, but CDF is the cumulative distribution function or the cumulative of probability of certain X or certain success that we see in this case. So I put two column here because why? You can find the first uh, uh, is using the formula and the second you can easily use the excel function i am going to show you both way on how you can use the formula which is kind of easy 
and the Excel function, which is more easier to find out, to find out your CDF for each and every success that we have. Let us begin with the first that will be uh, using the formula. Now, if you can see here, class, uh, I have not some comment for each and every row here. Okay, what are the comments? The first comment reflect the probability of the X that we are talking about. See here, class, the sign is different. This is PX equal to zero, but this one is PX less than or equal to zero. If you move to the next row, PX less than or equal to one. What does it mean? If I'm talking about PX less than or equal to one, you go to the notes here, is actually the summation of probability zero success plus one success. So if I go to the nine successes, it is the cumulative of zero success until nine successes. So if you go to this row and you can see the comment here, it's the summation from zero success until nine success. Now, so now, how we can use our uh, uh, formula, okay? Now, go to the first cell. We are looking for the cumulative for x less than or equal to zero. It's just simply the first probability exact value, which is equal to zero, okay? I repeat again, how to find it? Go to this cell, click equal to, and we know that we are talking about the exact value of zero success. So click the probability of zero here. And then it will note down the cell that we are referring to. And then click enter. Once you click enter, it will recall or we will take the value of the probability of x is equal to zero. Now we move to the second row where we want to find the probability the cumulative probability up until one. Okay, so what do you need to do? Put the equal sign and we need to sum the first and second row. So equal to put sum. Okay, I need to sum these two. Okay, and then enter. Okay, so the same goes to the next and in this case, because due to the reason why I want you to understand the different uh, process in each, so I will do the same until I get the 10th uh, summation. Okay, so for the third one, it involves up until three success. So let me finish everything. I purposely do it one by one so that you can understand why uh, and how we can get the summation of each and every single um, cumulative uh, CDF that we want to find. And finally, when you go to the last um, the last summation, it should give you the total probability that we are calculating. So in this case, it seems that everything is correct now. What if I want to use the uh, function using the uh, from the Excel? So from this first row where I you get you can see the common uh, the comment here this will be the formula that you need to use in order to find the CDF for each uh, X that we are looking for so let's begin with the first one remember class when we are doing here okay uh, you use the, uh, uh, the, the you use the command false but 
when for CDF, you will use the command true. So binom dot this. Okay, sorry for the wrong uh, uh, mistakes. So once you did correctly uh, type, you can get the uh, function and then do again the same. Uh, the number of success that you are looking for, zero, comma, and then the number of trial, comma, and then the number of uh, probability of success, comma, and then we are looking for CDF, so double click through. And before we go further, remember, we have to log the location of uh, number of trial and probability of success. So you can put the dollar sign for the column number of trial and column number of uh, probability of success. Click enter. So once you have done, check. Okay, everything correct. The location is correct. The number of uh, the number of success is correct. So you can drag down. Sorry. Drag down. And you can get an exactly the same value for each and every row that we are calculating. So now we have done our table of PMF and CDF. Now, the next thing that you can do in order for you to find the answer easily using this PMF and CDF, let's say we want to find the answer. What is the probability that exactly nine circuit pass the test? So that reflect these questions. Okay, so what would be the answer? Very easy. So in this case, we know that we are talking about exact value nine successes. So you go to PMF. Okay. You can get the answer. Just click the uh, value of the, the cell that contain x equal to 9 and then enter. So this is how you can find using uh, direct answer. Okay. Now, uh, let me uh, add some more. So you can see uh, how you can use uh, the formula and Excel function directly. So if you are using PMF here, yeah, and if you are using CDF here, yeah. okay. Now, okay. Let me put it in order so that it can be easily seen. Now, what if I'm using my CDF? Okay, so if you if you refer to your textbook, there will be some formula that you can see. Now, in order for me to find exactly nine, and I'm using my CDF. Okay, so how I can use it? So it will be to find the exact value for nine. It will be using the cumulative ex, uh, less than or equal to nine successes. That will be here minus the successes before uh, nine that will be eight successes so you will get exactly the same or equal to nine okay so it will be simply adding all this until you get nine number of successes which is you can just take from here okay and using the cdf okay it will be directly less than or equal to which will give you the same answer. Let us see uh, how does the measure of central, central tendency as well as measure of uh, dispersion reflect this particular um, equations. So now, in order for us to calculate the mean and the variance as well as the standard deviation, okay, you can generate this uh, what we call distribution table for the first that involves the number of success, the second is the PMF, and the third column is the calculation of X multiply with the each probability, which gives you this, and the fourth column is where you need to square the X value and multiply with the probability of X, and you will get the fourth column.
Okay, so that's how you can find the mean and the uh, variance and the standard deviation for this particular exercise. Now, let's um, uh, plug in the value. And in this case, okay, it should refers to, okay, So I'm taking again the value that we have generated over here. Okay. And then uh, maybe is it possible to drag down so that everything can be copied? So 0598895874. Yeah. Okay. Now this is the value that you need. So how do you get this one? So you click equal to uh, find the, uh, click the self value for zero success and multiply with the probability of success. Okay, so you repeat again for the rest of the row. So just track down. Okay, check. So how to check? Click the uh, cell over here and it should reflect the uh, correct cell that need to be multiplied. So for this one, okay, equal to take the value of your x, you have to square the x and then multiply with the probability of x here. Okay, so again, drag down. Okay, and it should give you the correct answer. Double check, go to the cell and you can see uh, what did you do here? You multiply 10, uh, you uh, square the 10, you get 100, multiply with uh, Q71 is 0 0.5897, so it will give you 59.8737. So you have uh, generated your third column and fourth column, then you have to find the summation value. So in order to find the summation value for the first uh, one would be type equal to and then sum and then highlight all the probability value and then click enter. The same goes to the fourth column equal to sum and then highlight all the value over here and then enter. So you have generated your table over here. Then you can use them to uh, find the mean, variance, and standard deviation. Now, this table is used to manually find your mean, your variance, and standard deviation. And this uh, formula is based on the formula uh, that is being, uh, that is being um, uh, described in the textbook. So you can check your textbook and find the formula on how to uh, get the mean and standard deviation as well as the variance. So, how? So, it would be, I have uh, put some comment over here. It should be the sum of all, uh, the third column will give you the mean. So, it will be equal to, just take the value over here. Okay. And the variance would be, okay, sum of the the fourth column minus the mean squared. Okay. This one just now is the sum of the third column only. So here it will be equal to sum of this minus the mean and it should be squared. Just to make sure that uh, the the square is being done first. So just I just put column of uh, bracket here. So click enter. Okay, so it should give you 90.73 minus 9.5 squared. Okay, so it will give you the variance. And how to find your uh, standard deviation? It will be square root the variance. So it will give you 0 0.4750. And how to find using the Excel function? It's very simple. 
again, uh, in order for me to ease my uh, calculation and uh, the reference here, I again put um, the, the information that we have earlier on in this particular cell. So it would be easy for me to show how you can find the mean, variance, and standard deviation using the N, P, and Q only directly using uh, the Excel function. So we know that to find the mean, it is the multiplication of number of trial and probability of success, just like this one. So it will be equal to N multiply with probability of success. It will give you the same exact value as what you have in the uh, using formula just now. So for NPQ, it will be equal to N multiply P multiply Q. Okay. Oops, I have, uh, I did, uh, what is wrong with here? Let us see, maybe it is for the decimal point. Yeah, I, I want them, let's say, to be in three decimal point. Okay, so it will give you the same exact value. So what I did just now is, I changed the setting of this particular answer into three decimal points so that it will give the same answer that I uh, got over here. And finally, the last one would be square root. So SQRT, the value of your variance. Okay. Uh, okay, what's wrong here? It's actually square root. Now, uh, pardon me for that. The value here. And, okay, it should give you the same exact standard deviation using the formula as well as the Excel function. Now we have done with our first questions. Okay. Now let's go to the uh, second question, which sounds like this. Okay. Let us see the second question. Now, in a data transmission, okay. In a data transmission channel, the probability of a packet being received without error is 98%. Okay, what is the probability that exactly 97 out of 100 packets are received without error? Okay, so make sure you understand the equation, then only you go and define your x and identify the distribution of your x. To, uh, to make the discussion easier, so I have already uh, note down how to define your x in this particular equation. So x in this case is the number of receiving packet without error. So this is considered as the success for this particular experiment. Now, how does the distribution of x look like? So in this case, X is distributed with number of trial 100 and probability of success is 98% or 0.98. So let's have in mind with that particular um, data. So plug in every data that you have into the correct cell. The number of trial is 100. Probability of success is 0.98 and uh, we get ready with the uh, table of uh, 100 number of trial. So we have from zero success, one success, two successes until 100 successes. Okay, so how to find? Okay, let's uh, begin with the first generate the PMF. So in this case, I would go simply into PMF and CDF. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I hope you can understand the concept and the discussion that we have discussed in detail about PMF and P P CDF uh, in the previous questions. Okay, so in this case, okay, let me begin again. Okay, equal to, in order to generate the PMF, it will be binom dot this so you can see double click the first instruction you have to note down what is the number of success that will be in column p 
and uh, row 89 because the the instruction uh, close the uh, you know over uh, overlap the the location i'll just put that will be p 89 okay comma and then reflect the number of trial 100 and probability of success comma and notify you are looking for pmf so double click the false and then close the bracket so enter double check again does the location correct zero success and number of trial p probability of success and again lock the location so that it will remain the same along the way your calculation until the 100 trial so enter go to that cell okay go to the edge and then drag down until 100 number of trial okay okay so it should give you this just to make sure that everything is correct you are looking for the total probability so sum all the value okay up until 100 it should give you one okay enter so correct you have one now you want to find the cdf for each and every success okay equal to binom dot this double click highlight the location of your uh, success each success so it will be p89 okay and then trial number comma probability of success comma and then you are looking for cdf so double click through and then enter before you drag down okay if you don't put the dollar sign this is what happened so we don't want you to have the wrong uh, calculation so click uh, lock the column for number of trial the cell of number of trial and the cell for probability of success so put the dollar sign and then enter now you can drag down without any error okay so the end of your calculation should give you one that will be the uh, last cumulative for 100 trial which should give you one now let us move to few questions let's say you want to answer the question what is the probability that exactly 97 out of 100 packets are received without error so that reflect this particular row now we are looking for exactly 97 okay so you can use pmf or you can use cdf okay as what i have mentioned before if you can see the 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 comment over here i already put the comment uh, what does it mean by having said that it, it is equal to 97 uh, less than 97 okay uh, less than or equal to 97 okay uh, greater than uh, 97 okay and so on and so forth so you can check uh, the the comment in the worksheet that will be provided later now let us find the answer okay so i'm looking for exactly 97 okay so let's say i'll erase this okay and we do it again to find the value so it will be equal to 97 so you just go and find 97 exactly 97 so you are referring to the pmf so this will be exactly 97 successes that you will have and then click enter so automatically it will give you the answer okay now how to find um, 
using the CDF, again, this one is a bit tricky because you are using the cumulative value. So in order to find the exact uh, answer for that, you will have to deduct X, uh, probability of X less than or equal to 97 minus the uh, probability of uh, success less than or equal to 96. So when you deduct these two, it will give you exact 97 success. So what you can do here, you will use, okay, you will use your formula, okay, from your CDF, so it will be equal to 97 means that you have to use your CDF whereby, let us see where is the location. I am looking for exactly 97, but using the CDF, I will have to deduct, okay, 97 or less number of success with the 96, okay. And it should give you the correct answer for exactly 97 success. Okay. Now, what if I'm, I am looking for probability less than 97? Means that I am talking about, okay, sum of all the probability of successes from 0 until or 0 to 96. Why 96? Because I am looking for less than 97 successes. So in this case, what do I do is that I will just sum all the value, okay, sum all the value from 0 until 96. Okay, let us move to 96. Okay, come on. 96. Okay. Sum from 0 until 96. Okay. So you can see this will be your answer. Now, for you to use the CDF, okay, what do you mean by Px less than 97? It also reflects that it is the probability of x less than or equal to 96. Okay, so having this in mind, so using your CDF, it is exactly at 96 and below. Okay, it will be 96 and below. So you go to the location of 96 and then click enter. Okay. So definitely it will give you the same answer uh, if you do it using the PMF, summation of all the probability involved. And the same if you just click down the CDF. Okay. Now, what about less than or equal to 97? Just now, you are talking about less than 97. But now, less than or equal to means that 97 is included. So... Uh, what did you do here? You will sum all the value of the success from 0 until 97. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. Let's move until we get 97. Okay. And then click enter or you can close the bracket or you just directly click enter. So this will give you the answer using the summation. Uh, but for less than or equal to 97, it's just directly using the CDF for less than or equal to 97. Click enter. Enter. Uh, did I get the answer? Okay, it should be equal to location of my 97. I think my, my internet is a bit slow. Eh? Okay, so you will get the same answer when you calculate manually. Now, you want to find 
the probability greater than 97, which include that 97. Okay. In other words, you are looking for the probability. Okay. I'm moving the cursor. Okay. You are looking for greater than 97, including the 97. So you are looking for this answer. So if you are looking, uh, if you are using, using the PMF, it will be simply summing all these uh, four values, probability values, you will get the answer. Okay. So how it will be equal to sum. Okay. Sum of what? Sum of the PMF of each 97, 98, 99 and 100. Okay. Close the bracket and then click enter. Okay. You get 0 0.858962. Okay. So how if you want to use your CDF? Uh, in this case, if you are looking for the answer greater than, you have to remember that the total probability is 1. Since you are looking for greater than, you are using the CDF in order to help you out with the calculation of greater than. So it will reflect equal to 1 minus, since 97 is included, okay? So which means that I need to calculate below than 97, which is 96, okay? So 1 minus 96 for the CDF, and then click enter. Okay, it will give you exact answer if you are summing the PMF or if you are using the CDF. Okay, and the last one. Now, the difference between the last one is this one is including 97, but this one is not including the 97. So, here simply equal to since it should be greater than 97 but not including 97, okay, it will be sum of what? Uh, skip, double check again. Sum the probability of success from 98. Greater than 97 is 98, okay? So it will be equal to sum. Okay, and then enter. Okay, the same. And if you're using your CDF, it will be 1 minus probability of X since X is not, uh, 97 is not included. So it will be 1 minus PX less than or equal to 97. That will be this one. Okay, so you will get your answer. So, how to interpret the probability value? What does it mean? What does this value mean? What does this value mean? I, I believe in this case, I want you to go to your uh, class and recall again how you can interpret that. But the one that I would like to uh, continue is, since we, have, since we have a big number of trial, which is 100 number of trial, so you can easily see what is the differences between if we change some of the parameter involved in your uh, in your experiment? For example, we are talking about the number of trial 100 with a probability of 98. What if okay the probability value change into smaller value? For example, let's say we change that into 0 0.25. What happened? So you will get somewhat a symmetric uh, distribution, but most of the distribution lies between uh, somewhat 6 until 30, uh, 51. But most of the um, uh, trials, uh, most of the number of successes lies between 12 until somewhat 39. And the most that you can see is according to this particular value. Okay, now, what if I change to, for example, 0 
what it would be what happened to this particular distribution now you can see that the distribution move to the middle okay what you can understand from here is that we are talking about the change in probability value okay so what if i change to the uh, number of trial for example if let's say it become 50 okay now what happened here is that because we are talking about 97 which is beyond 50 so that's why everything now after 50 all the calculation become wrong because we are not referring to because the maximum trial is 50 so let us focus on the uh, distribution uh, uh, how does it change in term of the distribution when we change the number of trial by using the number uh, the probability uh, the success probability as 0 0.5 but uh, reducing the number of trial this is what happened to the distribution what if i okay remain as 100 trial but i change into 0 0.75 which is lower a bit than the original probability of success. So you can see as we change the probability of success, the measure of central tendency also changes from one location to another location. What will be your first observation? As you decrease the probability value, for example, 0 0.25, what happened? the measure of central tendency will be uh, lies within 24 to 27 for example in this case and if we increase to 0 0.5 the probability of success now you can see that the measure of central tendency increases to somewhat uh, from 48 to 51 okay as you increase the probability value okay or we use the original uh, probability value that will be 98 so you can see that it become this this way uh, a little bit skewed to the left so this will be some uh, of the effect when we change the probability of success in certain uh, scenario and